Hello everyone, in this video I want to introduce you to um, what I think is an exciting project that uh, uh, a few of us at Parsons have been working for uh, for a bit now um, with some folks at Aalborg University in, in Denmark, uh, and that's this uh, Urban Climate Project. Um, and recently we submitted it to the Esri Climate Resilience App Challenge 2014, which was a uh, pretty interesting um, as we sponsored uh, hackathon uh, hosted on the excellent Hacker League website, um, and really the goal was to leverage GIS technology to uh, identify ways to uh, address uh, climate change uh, in, in a number of different ways. So there's there's a number of really interesting projects that are listed off the site. Uh, I, I'd certainly encourage you to check those out. And, and of course, the one that I'm going to talk about today is, is our own, the Urban Climate Project. Um, so, you know, like I said, uh, this this really grew out of a collaboration between um, the, the, the Parsons, the New School for Design, uh, and the Parsons Institute for Information Mapping, where I'm the director, uh, and uh, some really great folks uh, from Alborg University that were working uh, pretty closely with um, uh, the, the, the Copenhagen municipality. Uh, and so this site was developed uh, really as a, as a joint effort between our two uh, groups and uh, it, it says here pretty much what it is but it's a, it's really a resource for practicing planners, uh, specifically pra practicing urban planners. Uh, and it's really intended to function as a decision support tool uh, so that, that cities of similar size uh, climactic characteristics and development trajectories can find similar resources uh, around the world uh, and really sort of learn from other urban planners what's working well and what's not working well. Um, a, a lot of the climate change guidance at that level is 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 um, uh, it tends to sometimes be a little glossy perhaps. Uh, it, it's hard to actually get to the the real metrics of what was done and, and the, the methodology. And, and so the, the goal of the site was really to provide a way for urban planners to not only identify resources uh, and ways to address climate change that, that had worked well, but, but also um, to, to really interact with each other. And, and so, you know, what we, we hoped this would become ultimately was a tool that, that would provide uh, a way to identify both mitigation and adaptation uh, strategies. Um, and, and at the same time, we, we wanted to keep this open to researchers. Um, so uh, the Open Climate Portal, which you'll see in a second, provides uh, essentially a list to uh, a number of uh, primary and secondary data sets, scientific reports, and analytic tools. Uh, and uh, hopefully it'll continue to grow uh, to that end. So um, now we didn't get through all of our steps as part of this hackathon. You can see down here we had sort of a list of, of things that, that we still would like to do. Uh, certainly if you're watching this video and, and uh, of course as the hackathon is going to be concluding, if you're interested in participating, we would love to have your input um, uh, and, and help. Again, this is really a community um, effort. Uh, it's really important for us to identify um, urban uh, data sources and resources for, for planners uh, in, in ways um, that can be easily um, both digestible um, but, but also uh, provide a roadmap for, for uh, really doing uh, on the ground work. Um, so with that said, let me skip to our site here. Uh, this is sort of in two parts. So, uh, you know, the first part of this was really just an introduction to the old, the, the entire concept of this urban climate project, right? So it says here on the main page, uh, created a collection of open access resources, reports, climate change data sets for transparent, uh, for, for planners and researchers. So the goal here was really to make it as transparent as possible, right? So we, we wanted to introduce um, folks to the concept. Uh, you know, it's, it's really geared towards um, specifically two groups of individuals, planners and researchers. Um, for planners, uh, again, it's really supposed to be a decision support tool, right? Um, so if you happen to be in Copenhagen or in New York or in Mumbai, you can identify resources um, that, that have been created by other planners in, in other cities of, of similar sizes and facing similar issues. Um, to your own. Uh, but then again, for researchers, um, researchers have such great um, uh, breadth of, of data and knowledge and, and all, you know, all these other great resources. We, we wanted to provide a way for, for the two groups to really connect and, and communicate. So, so this is also geared towards researchers. Um, and the idea is that eventually we'll have a much more robust and curated list of primary and secondary data sets, scientific reports, and, and analytic tools. 
Um, so scrolling down a little bit further here, um, and th this was really driven uh, by my colleague uh, Patrick Driscoll um, at, at Alborg, uh, but, but the idea was to break um, the mitigation adaptation strategy sort of along four primary themes, right? And so uh, the four primary themes as identified here is really um, data sets and resources and research dealing with the built environment, um, uh, and also energy, uh, followed by transportation and natural systems, and under each is sort of an explanation of what uh, what we're considering, uh, for example, built environment types of studies, uh, and and what we consider, say, natural systems types of studies, um, and and of course with the understanding that this is all rapidly evolving and changing, and these categories may change, but this seemed like sort of a natural way to begin breaking it up. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have a section that highlights the data that's available on the site. Um, and we've just highlighted a couple of interesting data sets uh, that are available right now on the site. Uh, one is this very interesting World Bank Climate Data API interface and uh, also the NOAA CM2 uh, climate models. All right, so getting to the map. Um, so we, we took advantage of the ArcGIS Online platform and, and really what we wanted to do was a couple of things. We wanted to highlight uh, risks being faced by a, a number of cities um, around the world. And so using the platform, we, we basically broke it into um, a number of different types of um, you know first regions, but also really what the climate hazard is. So for example, uh, we have flooding here um, in Moscow. We have uh, spring floods and, and summer and autumn forest fires. If I click on uh, Basel, we have landslides and flash floods. So, so the iconography was, was developed by um, uh, one of our designers at PIM. Um, and the, the idea here is to, to really sort of um, highlight uh, sort of initial characteristics between municipalities that, that might be an initial cue as to, you know, if I'm a planner in Spain, who else might be facing similar issues, right? So it's a pretty simple um, but but still effective, I think, um, and, and a nice way to sort of begin categorizing uh, these cities based on the types of risks that they're um, facing. Uh, so uh, after the creation of that GIS data set and after we sort of did this initial um, map, we, we sort of explored a little bit further uh, with the Esri platform. Now, now the nice thing about ArcGIS Online is, as many of you know, is that there's a there's a number of really great data sources that are that are available um, that, that we didn't have to pre-populate, right? So we we grabbed some of those. Um, you'll see here up here that we've we've got a lot of hours here, right? So these are these broad categories of things like wildfires, uh, wind, weather, wind storms, and and so on and so forth. But then if we scroll down a little bit, we've got these other really great layers. Um, that are all available through the system. Uh, so here's here's a pretty interesting one. This one uh, depicts um, heat wave risk of European cities, right? Uh, I've got uh, some other uh, data here that, that sort of uh, represents uh, global historical hurricane trends. Uh, we've got carbon storage. We've got the uh, Koppen-Geiger observed uh, data here. So, so again, really, really neat stuff uh, that that we didn't really have to do a lot of work just to get in. But, but once we start sort of mashing up these data layers, uh, I, I start to begin to build a map that I can really start telling a more compelling story with, right? So, um, the other aspect of this that that we really enjoyed working with a lot was was the social aspect, right? So, um, within the ArcGIS Online. Uh, platform there's there's the social media uh, template and that allows us to tie into really interesting data sources like Flickr, Twitter, and YouTube. And so with all of these we pretty much pre-populated them with some keywords, right? So uh, looking for any photos from Flickr uh, that might have uh, the keywords climate change or global warming or C40, uh, which is a reference to the C40 cities or climate or environment, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so uh, by doing that, we're really starting to harvest this information that, that might be available. And so if I pull up the broader map here, uh, we'll see an example of this. So um, once I close this little introductory pop-up on the app itself and I go to social, if, for example, I want to see if there are any 
good YouTube videos uh, maybe dealing with just climate change. Let's just try that. So I'll type in uh, climate change here. And we'll do a quick search. And it comes back with a couple here. And I can click on one of these. And I can play it. And so I really don't know what this is. Uh, but if we scroll down here, oh, here we go. Dr. Hans Rosling, Facts and Fiction on Global Health uh, NMD 2014. So. Um, pretty famous for his for his data visualization work um, and, uh, and, and so we're, we're able to actually play this video directly in the player here um, Okay, so uh, performing the same search on Flickr, if I want to search for any photos that might have the keyword climate in them, uh, I can do that quickly. And, you know, so, so we're not sure exactly, of course, what we're going to get here, but, but um, you know, most of the time we're getting something um, pretty interesting. Um, so that, that essentially sums up the, uh, the web map application portion of this. The other uh, interesting um, part of the site that, that we constructed uh, was um, using the CCAN engine, the very powerful CCAN engine, uh, to both integrate the map but also uh, the data. So this is our initial data store and as you can see here, so right now uh, we don't have a ton of stuff up here but this is the uh, just the beginning. This is our open urban climate uh, project statistics. We've got 48 data sets and 58 organizations represented uh, through eight groups and uh, all the data, is, of course, is searchable, and if we scroll down here, we have sort of uh, Addis Ababa sort of highlighted here. So these are various strategies and case studies and all sorts of other things that are applicable to that particular area. Uh, here we have a list of adaptation strategies um, from a variety of sources, uh, and this is all, you know, yeah, it, it's set up essentially in a way that is broken down by uh, the actual city. Uh, so right now we have 58 cities uh, represented and um, various, you know, some, some cities obviously have more data sets and more resources available than others, but, but hopefully we'll see these cities and these uh, portions of the site become adopted and, and um, fleshed out by the people that know these areas best. Uh, and under groups, uh, you'll notice that we're using um, some of the same categories that we had on the main page. We've got um, both the adaptation strategies and the mitigation strategies represented, uh, and then we've got sort of these key breakdowns here, built environment, critical infrastructure, energy, health, uh, natural systems, and transportation. Um, and, and so these will change sort of as the site grows. Uh, so by using the two together, what we end up with is a nice data repository for uh, essentially anything having to do with urban planning uh, and climate change uh, and then the map is, is serving as a, is a really nice updatable reference for essentially what's happening around the world. Now the other thing that I didn't talk about with the map um, that, that I really should highlight is that one of the nice aspects of the platform is the ability for anybody to add notes and so I've, I've just kind of stuck one in here but um, we, we really appreciated the uh, flexibility of the application to allow uh, other users to really flag things that are needed and, and um, uh, flag things that need to be addressed and sort of use the map as a, as a, as a broader communication tool. Um, so we're hopeful that by using this plus tying back to the data resources that the two can provide really nice um, resources for urban planners and for researchers. All right, so getting back to the main sort of splash page here, if you're interested in learning more about the Urban Climate Project, um, is, please do reach out to us. Um, uh, again, uh, Patrick and I are more than happy to talk and, and uh, discuss uh, ideas with you. Uh, the, the site is uh, very open, obviously, for collaboration, so you know you certainly can just hop on the site, set up an account, and, and start you know sharing what you know. Um, 
And we hope that as, as this uh, grows and as it becomes a, a, a popular resource, that the transparency of these materials will really lead um, towards adoption of better adaptation and mitigation strategies.